as mentioned, I'm Paul uh, Lakuma from Uganda, from the Economic Policy Research Center. Um, yeah, this is a study on global minimum corporate income tax and what challenges and prospects it presents for uh, Uganda. Um, just also to mention, uh, this is a, a work in progress, so uh, we will take every comment positively to improve the quality of the paper going forward. Um, so uh, this, the paper has a long motivation because we have to justify why we are really doing it. So we'll have like four slides for that. So um, i start with Uganda. Uh, charges a statutory rate of 30%. Um, that's quite high. But the CIT collection, the corporate income tax collection, has consistently been 1% of GDP or below. Uh, some papers in the past have uh, given suggestion why that has happened. Uh, a paper by Lakuma in 2019 suggests that the average effective tax rate is 4%. A paper by Koivisto, Musoke, uh, Nachambale, and Shimansky in 2021 suggests that uh, multinational companies in Uganda deduct about 20% uh, percentage point more than their uh, uh, large domestic counterparts. And uh, those two papers suggest that uh, um, there could be profit shifting. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, therefore, uh, that justifies why Uganda needs to reform the corporate income tax system. Um, coincidentally, there's uh, moves globally to reform the corporate income tax system. Uh, about 138 jurisdictions uh, have accepted and signed on a proposal to have a global corporate minimum tax rate at 15% of the global income. However, there's little uh, empirical work on, uh, on such a uh, tax rate on MNCs, especially empirical work concerning the implication for developing countries, uh, given uh, administrative capacities and uh, other problems which could emerge. Um, however, there are some papers, uh, particularly by the AMF, uh, which suggests that uh, if incentives are eliminated, we could have uh, what is consistent with today's theme, revving up revenue. Uh, we could see revenues increase. Uh, uh, others suggest that profit shifting could be uh, eliminated and competition, and uh, there could be positive spillovers uh, uh, for jurisdictions with high tax rate. Uh, in the opposite, um, low tax jurisdiction uh, uh, could also benefit, uh, but uh, they could face administrative issues. Uh, generally, developing countries expect to lose. Why? Uh, the business environment is bad, uh, bad infrastructure, uh, skills, skills level are lower, technology is much lower. So even if you harmonize the tax rate, uh, um, um, developing, you could see more investment flowing to um, the developed countries. That's the fear. Um, so we need to examine uh, what could be the, the effect, uh, mostly on tax collection. So for a country like Uganda, um, we expect the GMCTR or the global minimum corporate tax rate to increase the average effective tax rate. Obviously, this will happen. Uh, however, uh, given the business environment uh, and the other costs, other hidden costs which are non-technical, you expect um, firms to hide their output. Uh, the, what is popularly known as tax evasion. Um, uh, which could, uh, in the contrary, result into low tax collected. Uh, in the past, um, a number of papers, which I'm not going to cite here, 
have used elasticities to measure the marginal excess burden of uh, tax. Uh, the methods we use, um, they are in the literature. We estimate the mechanical revenue gain of moving from the current effective tax rate to 15% for the farms which meet the threshold. The threshold is already established. Um, uh, we also review the international literature or now to collect some elasticities. Unfortunately, not many studies have been done on Africa uh, which estimates the elasticities, apart from two studies from South Africa which estimate and one unpublished study by the World Bank on Uganda. Um, we group these elasticities into percentile, uh, the three percentiles, there's the 25th, the median, and the 75th. Um, but uh, most of the results are interpreted on the basis of the median. That's the, what you would call the baseline. Um, we use the estimate and the changes in the tax rate to estimate the likely reduction in the tax base as a reaction to the global minimum corporate tax. And what is reported is the difference between the two, the mechanical and the behavior. The behavior has the elasticity in it. The data we use is the URA farm panel, which has been curated by URA and UN wider and uh, documented in a study uh, by McNab, Nachambode, Juste and Kavuma in 2020-2022. Uh, these are the distribution of, the, of that uh, panel, CIT panel, by UN wider and URA. I won't go so much into it. So um, uh, from the distribution of the AETR, what do we find? Um, we find that the AETR of of uh, multinational companies increase with the introduction of the GMC ATR, the global minimum corporate tax rate, as predicted. Um, however, uh, also MNCs respond by disproportionately hiding output. That is the behavioral. So the behavioral redu uh, reduces the the the, the tax uh, burden. Overall, uh, both MNCs and DCs' response to GMCTR is not far from the behavioral change. That's the uh, black line down there. Um, so we look at the overall uh, response to the global minimum corporate tax rate. Uh, overall, um, re there's a revenue gain, regardless of the elasticity used. Remember, I gave you three elasticities earlier, the 75th, the median, and the 25th percentile. Uh, the elasticity is proportional to the revenue gain. So the higher the elasticity, the higher the revenue gain. Uh, those are the three lines you see there. Those uh, up there, the yellow, the orange, and the uh, gray. Uh, so the, the highest percentile is the yellow line and the median is the gray line, and the red line is the 25th. Uh, the gain in revenue is higher than the current collection. So the difference between the mechanical and the current collection is about uh, 500 billion. The, the revenue gain is about 500 billion. That's the lowest. So um, uh, so in general, there's a higher revenue gain with a change in, in the in the tax rate, because the, the current one is produces a much lower gain, the 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 moving from the current ATR to the fifteen percent produces a higher gain. That's what that graph is showing. So we also do a sector response. Uh, we are looking at the revenue um, uh, contribution of every sector. So we got four sectors which uh, contribute the most revenue in Uganda's context. These are information and communication, manufacturing, and then the financial sectors. The other sectors were merged into one single sector, which is others. <coughs> so you would expect that there would be 
uh, agriculture here, but agriculture does not contribute much to CIT. So we find that information and communication and manufacturing sector has the highest gain. <coughs> as you, the second highest gain is by manufacturing. The third highest gain is by financial. The other sectors contribute the least. Asset class, this is, uh, we break farms into two asset classes. That is um, um, the farms with uh, assets above 15 trillion and those with assets below. We find that there's much more revenue gain with farms with asset classes above 15 trillion. Then we also uh, uh, see the impact of the revenue between uh, uh, highly, thinly, thinly capitalized farms and the ones which use less debt in financing their investments. While there's a higher revenue gain among us, the ones who use less debt, uh, but that revenue is unstable. As you can see from the graph on your, that would be your right and my left. There's more stable revenue contribution by thinly capitalized farms, indicating that uh, this uh, reform could reduce base erosion and profit shifting. Uh, uh, we also measure reported and real response. Where reported is the loss in revenue, and the real is the decision to either invest or not invest. And here we find that uh, the manufacturing sector contributes the most revenue. Uh, and then the and also uh, has the potential to continue investing even under the new the regime. Conclusion, uh, what do we conclude? That there are size variations regarding response to the reform. Large farms provide more revenue gain. There are sector variations, as you have seen, uh, communication and uh, information sector provides the highest revenue gain but also has the least AETR, evades uh, most taxes. And the financial sector is sensitive to tax changes, while manufacturing sector invests the most. Thinly capitalized MNCs provide the largest revenue gain, uh, meaning the new tax reform could curtail base erosion and profit shifting. Uh, policy recommendation, um, there's need for coordination and enhancing administrative capacity. Uh, we need to adopt some safe harbor rules to simplify and uh, prescribing expected returns for specific sectors. Some sectors are more sensitive than others and uh, farm sizes. Some farm sizes are more sensitive to this reform than others. Then the last is limitation of mechanical deduction for potential base eroding payments for investors deduction. Thank you very much. Next steps is, uh, uh, of course, uh, there were some errors with the calculations which we need to correct going forward, uh, and also taking comments from uh, you people and also to improve the quality of the paper going forward. Thank you.